The long-awaited sequel to Desert Treasure was released last month and has been a massive success with players. 234. What? Nine adamant longsaws. Oh, uh, well, maybe not this player. But the bosses are so popular that weapon prices across the game have been crashing or skyrocketing for weeks, depending on how good they are at the new content. Take for example the Grazi Rapier. See that dip in its price? The high point is 55 mil just hours before the quest release. A few days later, it had crashed to 41 mil. Perhaps the most popular of the new bosses is Vardorvis, who is weak to slash. And with the rapier being a stab weapon, and with none of the bosses being weak to stab, its demand plummeted. But the Osmonton's Fang was on its way to the moon. Here you can see it had settled down to just under 36 mil before Desert Treasure 2. But then when popular streamers like Bodie started using it on stream, it's been climbing non-stop because it dominates two of the new bosses, surpassing the price of the rapier for the first time since after the first week of Tombs of Amasca release. And it's currently hovering around 50 mil. Even the Twisted Bow was impacted. On the day of the quest release, it was over 1.4 bill and had maintained one of its highest price tags ever for several weeks. But when players found out the bow wasn't particularly strong against the Leviathan, or any of the new bosses for that matter, it crashed over 100 mil. A few weeks after quest release and the price is still lower than it was. Tumikin Shadow saw an upheaval as well, having just been over 1.2 bill when the new content was released. The Whisperer is the longest fight of the four bosses, and magic is the dominant style to use. Since Whisperer also has the best drop rate for uniques, the price of the shadow jumped over 100 mil, and doesn't seem to be slowing down. The scythe of a tur jumped around a bit, but since it's only useful at one boss, it has settled to near its original price, which sadly is a fraction of the value of its mega rare companions, the Twisted Bow and the Tumican Shadow. But one item saw an insane increase. The Ancient Godsword was seen as a basically only PvP weapon since it was released with Nex last year. Its special attack, Blood Sacrifice, puts a curse on your target if it hits successfully, and 8 game ticks later, it will heal the attacker for 25 health if they're still within 5 tiles of each other. Since only PKers used it, it had a foul price point of only 28 mil. That's about the same price as a Bando's Godsword, but this drop comes from Nex. Within days of Desert Treasure 2 release, the Ancient Godsword shot up to nearly triple its price. Players are hoping for long Vardorvis trips, and using the Ancient Godsword seemed to be the way to do it, because that healing adds up a lot. Every release impacts the economy of the game, from the new content's drop tables to the demand of different weapons, even the number of people choosing new content over old. Here's hoping that Raids 4 has at least one boss that's weak to the scythe. And welcome back to the community channel. Doobie Dobbies loves his mace. I'll risk it. I don't give a f Come on, baby! What are you gonna do when the mace comes for you? Oh my god, we f smited him with a mace, you f***ing rat! Let's go! But can Doobie handle a 1v1 with one of the game's most famous PKers? Good fight! Holy mother of Jesus! <laughs> An incredibly intense fight by Doobie and Dino. Well done, gents. Oh my god, I've never had a fight like that, genuinely. I have been playing this game for 20 years, and I have never had a fight like that before. Well done to Dino for claiming the victory. Oh my god, I've just myself. I've genuinely got a log in my pants. I was shaking. Jake C wants to be one of the few Iron Men in the game with Blood Torva. <laughs> Let's go! First try! <laughs> oh my god, dude, what? 
Congratulations. Looks like the Grand Exchange in 2012. Flower poker, anybody? He's gonna need a snack after that escape. You were supposed to give that onion to Aggie for some yellow dye. Instructions unclear. Beggar is preparing for American Idol. Mud Goblin looks like one of those guys- Matt! Matt, don't be a salt in Mud Goblin's appearance, Lumu, and you look like that fish from Spongebob who gets angry when his pickles wasn't on the Krabby Patty, bro. F*** you, dude. Still no pickles! Boom. Oh my god, bro! <laughs> awesome. But how did you get the blue shorts in real life? From the Reddit recap, Edosense reminds us that the Rag and Bone Man mini quest is really just Budget Slayer. Louie Fooey here informs us that Runelight's bank plugin can disable the pesky upgrade to a checkx account reminder for those who aren't ready to switch yet. And Leilene fills us full of nostalgia with footage of the Calphite lair in the high definition old school style. Beautiful. The high definition client is working on getting plugins similar to Runelight, and the visuals are classic. But you know, regular old school is nostalgic too. We just got a ton of PK clips sent in from Instajashi today, and so we're gonna do a play by play showing his PK skills. Listen close to learn some of his tactics. Here, Instajashi is going against an opponent named Thorntones. Thorntones fires in a claw spec, but Instajashi had tank gear and protect from melee up. Joshi retaliates with a Void Waker spec. Fakie to the Fang, another Void Waker. Thorn Tones must have tried to spam his teleport, but you can't teleport rad right after specking. Interesting that Thorn Tones had claws and an Armadil Godsword. It looks like a fun combo, but didn't work out this time. Next, Joshi seems to have found Yugoslavia, and it looks like Insta Joshi is the big fish in this encounter. The guy is smited. One last fire surge to finish him off. Unfortunately, he got his prayer up just in time to protect item. Bad luck for Insta Joshi, but maybe we'll see him smite something in one of these clips. Next up, it looks like I know Scared is switching prematurely into his mage setup, allowing Insta Joshi to get some specs off on his much less defensive robes. You want to be in tank gear at all times, except when freezing, of course. So this is not a good play. And boom, the Ancient God Sword Smack secures the kill. But yet, Miller, no way. Going slow mo here, now he's not just after a PKer, but after a well geared Revenant Hunter instead. Insta Joshi's just been hit with the Ursine Chain Mace, which makes him bleed and deactivates his run. It looks like this Revenant Hunter has some anti PKer tricks up his sleeve. Very clever. However, despite the efforts, Joshi manages to just barely get the freeze on him before he escaped around the corner. Twenty-five mil from the clutch freeze. Nice one. Joshi really loves his Fang, a highly accurate five-tick weapon. He hits a 33 and needs to secure the kill before the prey gets another opportunity at escape. The guy had flashed protect from mage but switched to protect melee. The Void Waker has 60% damage against protect from mage but has full damage against protect from melee. And a 72 to finish off the kill. The opponent tried to prey against magic but was one tick too late. 20 mil PK. Well done. Let me know in the comments if you guys would like more play-by-play -play commentaries in the future.
do a friend. Hey guys, it's me, a friend, and welcome back to 10 hour loot video from Zorra. So I actually didn't get any magic fangs yet. You know, I'm actually kind of wondering, like, where is the magic fang? I swear it's on the drop table, but after, like, you know, doing this boss for that long, like, I actually can't find the fang. Like, where is it? So I'm going to do it for another, like, maybe 20 hours. Um, yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video, then, uh, bye, bye, bye. See you later, Dobidas. Bye. And see you tomorrow with another daily episode of RuneScape Chronicles.